So words around the office is that you've uh, come back from Pinewood. Some about a Sony unveiling. Care to share with us? Yes, yes. Yesterday, uh, Sony had a, a big event at uh, Pinewood Studios. A yeah. uh, big day for them because they're launching their first new Cine Alta camera for right. uh, five years. You know, the uh, previous one, I guess, was the F55, which was in October um, 2011. So it's been a long time. Uh, without a new Cine Alta camera. Cine Alta is Sony's uh, brand name, if you like, or category name for their high-end cinematography cameras. Uh, and, you know, they go all the way back to uh, cameras like the F90, the F23, uh, which were the first video cameras to shoot in 24p. Right. So really, arguably, uh, digital cinema goes back to those cameras from, you know, as much as uh, 19 years ago, I would say. So this is the very latest generation, and obviously a lot's happened in 19 years. A lot's happened in the five years since the F55. The F55 was a uh, 4K camera, uh, brought, it, brought with it XAVC, the Kodak, for the first time, um, and obviously a whole family of cameras followed that, the F5, um, even cameras like the FS7. But They've turned their attention back to the high end now with, with this new camera, which they've called, uh, unusually I think, they've called it Venice, as opposed to PXW-27Z <laughs> left square bracket, which Sony and all the other Japanese manufacturers are prone to doing. And I think it's a good move because, uh, you know, it's like a, do you remember the Renault Laguna? Yeah. Very easy to remember that name. Uh, Ari has the Alexa. Uh, Red has the the weapon and, and, and names for their sensors like the, the dragon and the helium and so on. I think it's a great idea. You know, it resonates with creative people and a name that you can, you, you know, it's a, it's a word. It, it, it means something as opposed to an abstract, rather sterile sounding um, product. It's clearly, it's clearly that Sony's had a shake up in their uh, naming department because it's it's got more sex appeal to say, you know, the Sony Venice. I, I think so. I think so. It's, it's at the same time obvious and quite a big step yeah. to take. But I think it's a very good one. And they describe it as a camera system. And by that, in, in the IT world, the equivalent of a camera system would be a computer platform, where a platform is something which is vastly upgradable. So what you see now with the Venice system is just the start. You've got the basic, you've got the body, uh, and the the sensor, the whole sensor block is interchangeable as well. So this is this is a, a piece of um, equipment that is massively upgradable. Um, again, I think it's really important to do this because the 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 opposite of doing that, uh, or the strong alternative, would be to have to bring out a new product every year. And of course, that, that diverts so many resources. You, you have to, you know, you have the marketing team, you have the designers, you, you have the industrial design, uh, and you have quality control, quality assurance. You have to go through all of that for every new model. Whereas if it's just software on an existing platform, you can focus all your resources. And actually, although it sounds counterintuitive, you can make bigger leaps by having a longer gap. And, fo and rather than spending all your resources on bringing out new models all the time. Have one new model which is upgraded all the time. So, for example, the rental houses will be happy. They're not going to buy something that's going to be out of date in two years. Yeah. Uh, and Sony have proved that with the F55 because the F55 now is almost unrecognisable in terms of what it can do compared to what it, it did when it first came out. So uh, this idea of a long product cycle built on, on a platform that is upgradable I think that that is almost half the story I think that's, of the new camera. I think that's way more attractive for buyers as well. You know, just you buy this. It is. You buy this camera. Yeah. I'm not going to make you force you to buy a new camera two years, it's, three years uh, down the line. And think of the emotional roller coaster that you go through when you buy. You know, this isn't a cheap device. It's it's an investment. When you buy it, and then next year, its successor comes out. Yeah. And then you've got clients asking you which version of it you've got, and all of a sudden your investment is worth, let's say, a lot less. That won't happen doing it this way. 
So I think for everybody, it makes an awful lot of sense. And it's maybe not so exciting for journalists because there's no massive product announcement every year that they can rely on. Yeah. But it is good news yeah. all round because everybody's going to be happier. It makes better business for Sony uh, and it's an easier decision to make for people who are going to invest in this product. So who's the target market for this camera? What's Sony's vision for it? You know, like, I'm... Uh, two quite separate questions there, both yeah. very interesting. Um, the target buyer, we weren't sure. We weren't sure. We were given some information way back in June at, at uh, Cinegear, and we were told this would be a new Cine Alto. It would be, we guessed it would be a high-end camera. We knew it would be full frame. Um, but we didn't know exactly what level it was going to be pitched at. We now know it is pitched at the very top level. So the people who will buy this camera will be anyone who needs to have access to the very top quality, uh, Sony themselves say, film-like pictures. So th this is going to be, this is right up there with the, at the high end. Uh, and for everything I've seen about it, it says that it is, it fully deserves to be right up there at the high end. Your second question was, what was Sony's vision for it? And I, I think they really did have a quite distinct vision about this camera, which was molded from five years of research with camera users, DPs, DITs, post-production, um, everybody involved in... Um, everybody whose lives are touched by the camera. Yeah. And th their conclusion after all that research was that what people want is great color, very wide color gamut, and that kind of includes great skin tones, if that was mentioned separately. Very wide latitude, dynamic range in other words. Um, and yes, they asked for shallow depth of field or the ability to invoke a shallow depth of field, which of course the full frame sensor size gives you. And to control that powerful capability, Sony's built in um, uh, multiple ND filters, in-body, selectable. They have two overlapping uh, ND filter wheels. So using combinations of two uh, of, of the ND filters, on the wheels, they can have, I, I can't remember how many, is it six or eight different values in body. So of course, that keeps everything simple. You don't, you don't need to rig the camera for external NDs and, and it means you can, you, you have immediate access to, to that wonderful uh, shallow depth of field. I think it's that doing your thing in the, from the box, you know, yeah. that, that convenience just, because you know, you hear pains from various filmmakers saying like, oh, you need to put this filter on, you need to mm. basically rig your camera up. Having that ability in camera is amazing. But speaking about abilities of cameras, was there any particular peripheral or feature of the camera that really stood out to you as a killer app? Well, I, I, think, I think as far as peripherals are concerned, they're actually the same peripherals as, as, as with the F5. Uh, uh, sorry, the, the F55 and the F5. Uh, that, that is to say the viewfinder, the... Uh, OLED full HD viewfinder and any of the other parts. There's the uh, there's the, the back end uh, recorder as well, which is used for the 16 bit raw. Yeah. Um, but the outstanding feature isn't really a feature. It's more of a characteristic, and, and that is the extremely wide color gamut, wider they say than any film. So this is incidentally this is why it's we're now. It's a big statement. Yeah, it's a big statement. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and this is why we are now at the stage where mere specifications are not enough to characterize and explain the capabilities of a camera. Because at the point where we're used to using film as a benchmark, and we've gone beyond that. This happened some time ago, read past this barrier some time ago uh, in, in various respects. But um, Sony are confident enough now to say that this camera, it, exceeds the capabilities of film and they're specific about that with its color range. It's beyond uh, beyond Rec 2020. It's uh, the the uh, dynamic range they say is 15 stops. Um, remember that 
Rec 709, which is standard dynamic range, is between six and seven stops. Anything beyond 10 stops is HDR. This is a camera that can do 15 stops. So the raw output from this is, is going to be uh, yeah, extraordinary. Yeah. And, and the good news is apparently that quite a few um, NLEs and post-production, you know, color grading apps and so on are able to accept the output from this camera, the, the Venice, immediately. So um, they've obviously had advance uh, notice of this yeah. and it's ready to go uh, straight out of the box. They really, really are pushing the box with this one, no pun intended. But it's, uh, it's to me, that's, they're thinking 10 years ahead. Am I, you know? Yeah, <coughs> and, and you're, you're absolutely right. And, and that, that really is incredibly ironic because more than ever now, with the rate of change of technology, you can't predict 10 years ahead. You, you, we might all you know, be hovering six feet above the ground in, in, in 10 years' time. We don't, we don't know that. Uh, Change is now fa so fast that it's unpredictable. So Sony and you know Red has to be said with their modularity, they've done the only thing possible, which is make their equipment as modular and as upgradable as possible. And that to me, that's perfect for the consumer. You know, I buy yeah. this, I can upgrade at any point, I can add. Yeah. You know, like it's still relevant because in my in my opinion, I would say that cameras these days, the quality of the image that they produce. It's no longer there's no longer a factor anymore because they're, they're all they all realistically produce great imagery. It is just now down to like the style in which the camera operates with you, how you like that image the camera creates with you, and how you feel about it. It's much more than just a numbers game. It is how you feel about that camera, you know those things. Yeah. Well, Colin, you, you've hit the nail on the head there. Um, and um, when I went into the session yesterday at Pinewood, Sony uh, Sony's slogan for the camera was everywhere. It said, emotion in any frame. And I, w I just went, really? <laughs> um, but actually, towards the end of it, that started to mean something. Because what you've just said is that we've moved beyond the specification. Now, under the hood, of course the specifications matter. Of course the resolution matters. Of course the color gamut matters. Of course every other fiddly um, parameter matters and there are greater people than you and I out there whose job it is to uh, adjust those ad infinitum and get the best results but but that's beyond uh, almost beyond our understanding the way we understand that is almost on an emotional level yeah totally I mean it, it's it's like the when this you know when I look at uh, like Leica cameras for example in the photography world I don't that's why I don't see them as ripoffs I, I, it is about the emotional connection you mm. have to the product mm. itself the design the way it makes you feel in fact it inspires you as well but quick quickly lastly uh, will we be seeing this camera at IBC is this going to be showcased yeah I'm pretty certain it's going to be at IBC you'll be able to see it working you'll be able to uh, try it out on the booth. Nice. Um, and I believe it's scheduled to start shipping in February 2018, so not too long to wait. Great. Thank you very much, Dave.